Some people are having difficulty installing a ROM on this particular device, the TOX3, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Right now I'm running a different firmware by Slimbox, but I'm going to go ahead and put the stock firmware back on it so I can show you how to do that. This is Slimbox ATV ROM, but I'm going to go ahead and boot back into Core ELAC. All I do is restart it, it goes back to Core, ELA, Core ELAC. Now it's booting into Core ELEC. Okay, here we are, here we are at the Core ELEC screen. Now let's go ahead and take this box and put a different firmware on it. I'll show you how to do that. In order to burn a new firmware onto the box, I will show you what components we need. This box needs its power supply. Normally you don't need it, but this particular box does need it. You need a mail to mail USB 2 cable. This is a homemade cable that works in a pinch. Then you're going to need a paper clip to depress the reset button. The reset button is underneath this hole right here on the bottom of the device. Okay, the most important thing we need is the firmware, or sometimes called a ROM. So if you go to this 4PDA website, this is where you get your ROMs. So we're going to go ahead and download this one of these here, which I've already done, but we're going to go ahead and put it on our box. But that's where you get the firmware. As you can see, I collect a lot of firmware for different boxes that I have had or have. So that's a lot of different firmwares that I have. This one right here, that's the one we're going to get. Now these are different firmwares, so I'm going to put the stock one back. Okay, I happen to be using Burn Tool version 3.1.8. I think I'm going to install this one right here. Again, that's the uh, stock image. So I open that up. And it's going to go ahead and load it into this application. You see down the bottom it has been loaded. So let's go ahead and click start. Now we'll go ahead and do the physical part of it. We have to use the USB 2 port, which is the OTG port. So that's the port we're going to use. And we will plug in our cable after we depress the button. So that's what we're going to do right now is you press the reset button and then plug in the cable. Okay, I'm depressing it. Now we'll connect the box. Now one thing you should hear when it connects, it should make a noise on the PC. Okay, that means I'm connected. All right, now if we look at the screen up here. Okay, now it's going to error out unless I plug it in. Now I need to plug in the power. Okay, I've got the power plugged in, so let's see what happens right now. Okay, it's been one minute and it's stuck at 5%, so I don't think it's going to make it, so we're going to try it again. But this is one of the most difficult boxes that I've had to put firmware on. Okay, now what I did, I did not pull the power plug. All I did was pull the USB cable from it. And when I plugged it back in, the computer made the noise, and I'm off and running again. So now it's going to burn it. But again, when I first did it, it did not go anywhere. It was stuck. So I just pulled the USB 2 cable from the box. I left the uh, uh, power still plugged in. And then I plugged it back in, and it started working. Okay, to demonstrate, all I did was click stop, and I'm going to click start again. Alright, it just connected. So having the power in is the key. And you can hear the sound from my computer. That means that this box is talking to my computer. So you have to have that, hear that sound. If you don't hear that sound, then uh, you need to uninstall that burning tool and reinstall it again so it, it, so it adds the drivers. But I'm using a Windows 10 computer. Okay, it's at 67% downloading something called Super. Almost done. It's verifying the Super. We're 98%. It only took two and a half, three minutes. So 
but normally some of them will take up to four and a half minutes to burn so but this should be the stock stock firmware so after this gets done we'll go connect it to the uh, TV okay it's done let's go connect it to the TV now okay let's go ahead and click stop then we can disconnect the box okay it's booting up so we'll check it out in just a minute there it is this should be the original firmware that I just reinstalled so it is working okay if you notice there's an update available now again this is a brand new firmware that I just installed so the key is making sure you have the power supply connected when you burn it and listen for that sound when it connects that is a key that tells you if you have the drivers installed correctly if you do not hear that sound when you connect the box to your computer you need to re reapply those drivers so uninstall that app and reinstall the burning tool